The co-pilots just keep on coming. We're hot off the presses of Build last week where they announced a few new co-pilots for the Power Platform. In this video, I want to go over the new Power Automate co-pilot, show you how to get started with it today and what it can do. We'll check out all the co-pilot goodness right after this. So at Microsoft Build last week, there were a few key co-pilot announcements. One being a new co-pilot for Power Pages, which I'll cover in a future video, and the other being the co-pilot inside of Power Automate. And this is in addition to the co-pilots that we already had in Power Apps and Power Virtual Agents. So pretty much every Power Platform product we have now has a co-pilot associated with it. We've talked a bit about these co-pilots in other videos, but it's really changing the game on how we build solutions in the Power Platform, making it that much easier to get started. And this Power Automate co-pilot is no exception. I'll include a link to this documentation that you're seeing here that they released on Power Automate Copilot if you wanna dive a little bit deeper into some of the ins and outs. Now, right now, the first thing to point out about this is this is a preview feature. So first, let's walk through how we even get access to try out this new Power Automate Copilot. And of course, we have to have this disclaimer here. This is a preview feature, and because of that, we probably don't wanna be using it in our production scenarios, but it is good to try this out, test it, so you can get familiar with putting in the right prompts and how it works and all that. Since this is a preview feature, you'll need access to a preview environment to be able to try this out right now. So to do that, you can go to the Power Platform Admin Center and go over to your environments tab here. We'll create a new environment, give your environment a name here. So I'll just call this test stuff. And then in the region, this is the important part. So you'll wanna select the region of preview United States. This will give you access to the Power Automate Copilot. I don't have an ETA yet on when this will be generally available. So if you're watching this in the future, it might already be available and you can bypass this step. But once you have this environment, you'll be able to test it out. So if we go back over to Power Automate now, in your environments tab, make sure to select your preview environment. And now right on the home page, you should see this new experience with the co-pilot right at the top. So this could be the new place where we start building our flows. There are a few things that I want you to keep in mind when you start using this as it is today. This is the very first release in preview, so that means that it's not going to support in the Copilot all of the connectors that we have access to inside of Power Automate. There's gonna be a limited subset right now of connectors that is able to recognize and add actions for you. And all of these limitations are documented here on this page that I'll put a link to in the video description. But just a few highlights here, we can't edit with Copilot if your flow contains child flows right now if it's utilizing AI Builder, SAP, or desktop flow connectors. And in general, if it's just a really old flow that's using maybe the old connection format or maybe the old Power Apps V1 trigger, those won't be supported right now with this capability to be able to edit your flow with the Copilot. But I suspect as this gets more widely rolled out, some of these restrictions will be lifted. So besides the current limitations, the other thing that you really need to have a good grasp on is how to write a good prompt for the Copilot. And they have some pretty good guidance here in the documentation on some of the fundamentals of writing a good prompt. There's a lot of trial and error that goes on here because you ideally wanna try different variations of your input to see what really resonates. But the kicker here really is to be as specific as possible. You don't want to assume any prior knowledge. So instead of saying, I wanna process time off request, that's really vague, that's really generic. Think about the details of that. So what is your current process? Where do these time off requests come in? Are they stored in a SharePoint list? Are they stored in Dataverse and SQL? And think about all of those little details, like send an email to the person's manager for approval. And maybe once an item is approved, change the status to approved. So instead of saying I want to process time off request, say something like when a new item is added into our time off request SharePoint list, send an email to the created by his manager asking for approval, and once approved, change the status to approved. That's a good example of a really specific input that you can put into the Copilot, and it should be able to run with it. Another big tip here is, if possible, mention the connector too. So that's why it's important to know where your data is and what you're wanting to consume from. So if you're getting information from Microsoft Forms, for example, specifically mention the Microsoft Forms connector, or if you wanna send an email, try to be specific and say, send an email with the Outlook connector. So we got all of that out of the way. Let's actually see how this works. We're gonna see if Copilot can help us automate our issues tracking. We have a SharePoint list where we're managing the issues that come in. 
Ideally, when an issue comes in, we want to notify the person that it's assigned to to let them know about the issue. And say maybe we want a notification inside of Microsoft Teams for that so that they get an alert. And then maybe also send an automated message to the person that submitted the issue, letting them know that we'll be working on their issue and someone will get back with them shortly. So let's see how we can ask Copilot to help us out with this. And we want to be as specific as possible here. So I'm going to say something like when a new item is added to a SharePoint list, send a notification in Microsoft Teams and email the creator. So we're keeping it specific, but yet still a little generic. You see, I'm not getting very detailed on what specific list I want them to connect to or the data points in the list. Now we'll just see if it's able to recognize my input. So we're going to submit this to the copilot. It'll go behind the scenes, use the GPT functionality to recognize what I put in and suggest a flow structure. So it was able to pick up the when an item is created SharePoint trigger, which is correct and what we want. And you'll see it added some things in here in the action. Since I didn't specify exactly who to send the notification to in Teams, it did add a get my profile action to get the context of the current user. And that's who it looks like it's trying to send that Teams notification to. So there might be some tweaking that we want to do here, some stuff that we don't need depending on our inputs. But this is a pretty decent overall structure here that I think I can work with. And of course, if it's way off, you could try tweaking the input again and giving it another try to see if you get better results. But this is close enough for my use case. So we're going to click next. At this phase, it's just going to authenticate in your connectors and make those connection references there. And now we'll create flow. Now, this is different than if you've seen some of my previous videos or other posts in the community here about that describe it to design it functionality that we've had inside of Power Automate for a little while now. You'll see this is the differentiator really in that experience is instead of dumping us off into the flow editing experience and we're kind of on our own now to make any tweaks, this co-pilot is staying with us throughout the editing experience. The other thing that you'll notice here too, along with this new co-pilot experience, is we have a brand new refresh look and feel for the flow editor. So this alone will probably take a little bit of getting used to because it is quite a bit different than the classic experience. But what I really want to show you is how we can harness the power of the co-pilot to keep tweaking our flow. So as I mentioned, we don't need this get my profile action. So we can actually ask the co-pilot to do all these things for us. I can say remove the get my profile action. And I'll actually go and recognize that. And you'll see right here, real time here in a second, it should, there you go, it should remove that get my profile action for me. And I can do the same thing. I could say remove the get user profile action. And it should go through and remove that. So then we have the when a new item is created, we have the posting a message, and then we have the send email. So beyond adding and removing actions with the copilot, we can have it fill out our parameters. So this is an example of what the new kind of parameter experience looks like here for our flows. So instead of having that dialogue that pops up in the canvas, it opens up a panel on the left hand side where we can fill out that information. So if I know where my SharePoint list is, I can copy this site address here and I can ask the copilot to use this and I'll do a paste of that as the site address for my when an item is created trigger. And hopefully it's able to recognize that again, a lot of this is some trial and error, just seeing what it's able to recognize. And then in the conversation tree here with the copilot, it does let us know what it did and if it did something successfully. So it's telling us here that it updated the trigger. I can click on that and there you go. It looks like it did fill that in with the site address. So I can keep working with that. I can say make issue tracker, the list name parameter for the when an item is created trigger. So again, it looks like it updated that and there it is. So now just by using this copilot and having a very natural conversation, it's helping me build out this flow. So the other things we need to do is in this post a message in a chatter channel, we need to select some options here as well. Now I'm curious, I haven't actually tried this yet. So let's just try it together right now and see what it can do. Cause maybe I don't know what the options are to post as. So I can maybe ask the copilot, what are the post as options? for the post message in a chat or a channel action. So this isn't really asking it to do something in our flow. It's more asking it for additional information so that we can use that. So this is a good one to test. These are not correct. So another just good reminder when we're using any of these large language models like this, AI generated content, 
can be incorrect. So when you're using it for cases like this and you're trying to ask it some questions, it might not be right because as we can see, the options are actually user, Flowbot, and Power Virtual Agent. So there might be some, some cases where you need to mix and match because if you don't know what the options to post as are, you're probably gonna have to click into that dropdown anyway to find out and you might as well click it and not use the Copilot. So there's times where it's just easier to do it the old way. There's times where it's easier to leverage the Copilot and have it do some things for you. So you'll find that good mix of what makes sense. So for this one, I'm gonna post as a Flowbot and then for the post in, so we'll do the chat with the flow by. And now we need to fill out the recipient and the message. So maybe for the recipient here, I'll fill this out manually using dynamic content, just so you can see the new experience that we have with this new flow designer. So to get some dynamic content, we can click on this lightning bolt icon and that will pop open our dynamic content window with searching. So I can select my assigned to email field from my trigger. And then now we just need to fill out the message. So let's just try using the copilot for this. So I can say add the following as the message for the post message in a chat or channel action. So I'm gonna say new issue has been assigned to you. See details below. And so we'll see, is it able to be able to get any dynamic content to be able to pass in here with the copilot? Let's just test out some of the capabilities and what it's able to do. So not exactly sure how to format this. Let's try assign to display name from when an item is created trigger. We'll see if it's able to catch on that. And let's just try it at that. We'll fill out the rest ourselves. So we'll just see if it's able to get that information or not. All right, Copilot, what are you able to do here? Let's see, so it updated the action. Okay, so it wasn't able to handle the, the mixing of dynamic content right now. So this could just be the way that I'm asking it. It could just be a current limitation right now that could change in the future and get even better. Not sure, but you'll play around with it and you'll see what works and what doesn't, but that was a good experiment to at least try. So I can just continue formatting this myself so I could have like that assigned to header and we can put in our dynamic content here. So there's our display name and we'll say issue. Let's get in that title there and we'll just keep it simple like that. So now let's just finish this out by filling out the send an email. So for the two, I'm gonna actually use dynamic content again. So we'll use a custom value here. And then we'll go to the created by email. And now we'll leverage Copilot for the subject and body. We'll keep this simple. So we'll say add new issue received as the subject for the send an email action. And we'll let that run. And then for simple inputs like this, when you're not leveraging dynamic content in my testing, it works really great. So if we look at to send an email, there you go, there's our subject. And then for the body, we'll say add, your issue has been received. Someone will get back with you within one to two business days. We'll say as the body of the send an email action. I'm gonna save this at this point. And now we can do a quick test. So I'll go over to my list here. We'll add a new item, put in a really helpful description that just says help. I'll go ahead and assign this to myself and we'll click save. All right, so now we see that this flow succeeded. If we go look at our team, we should have a notification, which we do. So we have an alert here that here's the summary that it sent, letting us know about the issue. So it did automate all that for us using the Copilot. Now, another thing I wanted to point out here on this flow detail screen is if you do want a little bit more time to get used to that new editing experience, and maybe you want to use the classic editor experience in the meantime, if you build something using Copilot like this, if you go to the edit tab, you have the option to either use with the classic designer or with the AI powered editing. So if you don't want to leverage the AI powered editing and just go back to the classic way, even though we built this flow with the AI powered editing, we can go to edit with designer, that top option there. And this will dump us off into that classic experience that we've been used to with building our flows where we do everything manually and it has the classic look and feel. So if you're not ready to embrace the, the new look and feel and all that, uh, you can still revert and go back to this classic mode. So I hope this gave you some ideas of how you can start utilizing this new Copilot functionality inside of Power Automate. I think this will be extremely useful for those just getting started with Power Automate to reduce those barriers to entry, but also help some of us that have been using Power Automate for a while, maybe build flows a little bit quicker by having that Copilot along with us to help us perform different actions and do things just a little bit faster.
And another thing I wanted to mention, if you want some ideas of what you can do with these prompts and all of that, or maybe you're trying the co-pilot out for Power Automate and you have a really good prompt that really solved your problem and built a cool flow, I'd love for you to share that with the community so that we can all benefit from that. We did just release a new prompt library for the Power Platform. So if you go to aka.ms forward slash Power Platform prompts, that'll take you right here to our open source prompt repo. So in here, if we go into prompts, You'll see we have different categories for it, whether it's a AI builder prompt using the chat GPT model in there, or whether it's a Power Apps, Power Automate, or Power Virtual Agents Copilot prompt. So for this scenario, if you're using Power Automate, you can add a new PR in here, submit your Power Automate Copilot prompt that you used, and then other people can copy and paste that and use that in their solutions. Right now, we have several prompts that you can get started with for AI Builder. So if you're using that GPT-powered creation AI Builder model, you can see several different prompts and things that you can use it for, like an SMS generator or proofreading something and all these different use cases. So it's just a matter of going into the prompt and copying and pasting the prompt into AI Builder. Well, that's all that I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I'd love to know what you think about all these co-pilots. So if you have any feedback or anything you want to share, drop a note in the comments and let me know. And if you found this video helpful, do me a big favor and hit that subscribe button so that you can be notified of future videos. Thanks so much, everyone. I'll see you in the next video. Before you go, check out some of these other videos I have on AI and the Power Platform.